done. I'm 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 80 years old. In 20 years, I will give a rat's ass. Of images. And they can mine it with artificial intelligence for a position of my face for the long. Shocking revelations have recently emerged from none other than the legendary Harrison Ford, exposing some incredibly sinister tactics lurking within Tinseltown. While the industry is grappling with the recent controversies surrounding the movie Sound of Freedom, News is coming to light that is certain to change Hollywood as we know it. Absolutely uh, unacceptable. We, we can't have that, so we got to figure out something that, 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 that is fair. More specifically, Harrison Ford has blown the lid off a new disturbing tactic in Hollywood, AI replacing actors in Hollywood. The raging debate has sparked a full-blown strike, igniting fury as actors and scriptwriters fear losing their very livelihoods to artificial intelligence. It's safe to say that lines are finally being drawn in the sand now. Be having our jobs taken away and giving to robots. We will not allow you to take away our dignity. Hollywood has in general been divided on the use of artificial intelligence, especially when it comes to replacing actors and writers. But amidst the opposition, there are some who are embracing this cutting edge technology. Take the recently released Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, for example. The creators, with the help of Industrial Light and Magic ILM, used AI to de-age Harrison Ford for the movie. I'm retiring. Dr. Jones. There might be some. Looking for this. ILM's face swap technology, backed by a team of 100 skilled artists, worked its magic to make the 80-year-old actor appear young in the film. They used CGI, machine learning, and geometry derived from photography for a 25-minute flashback sequence. The process involved using extra cameras alongside the main one to capture all the necessary data, including lighting and intricate details of Ford's face. AI played a significant role, with a computer scouring through old Indiana Jones films to gather reference images for matching shots in Dial of Destiny. After shooting the film, they went through each shot using face swap technology and machine learning to create a 2D replica. But they needed a little help from 3D scans of Ford's face, so the man himself had to record his facial expressions in different scenes to get the final performance just right. And guess what? It took a whopping three years to put it all together before hitting the big screens. This isn't the first time ILM has used these techniques. They've been behind it in Rogue One, a Star Wars story, and The Mandalorian, while other big productions like Marvel Cinematic Universe and Martin Scorsese's The Irishman have also dabbled in the AI realm. However, the widespread use of AI may seem magical in all, it has raised concerns among designers and VFX artists, leading to a full-blown strike from the WGA, Writers Guild of America. AI is now at the center of Hollywood's labor disputes, stirring up negotiations and uncertainties. The language used around it can sound both promising and threatening, depending on who you ask. Star actors fear losing control of their lucrative likenesses, while lesser-known actors worry about being replaced altogether. Writers, on the other hand, fear they might have to share credit or even lose credit to machines. Both actor and writer unions have struck, but the proposed contracts only last three years. Despite the rapid advancement of AI, widespread displacement in such a short time is unlikely. However, unions and employers know that compromises made in one contract might set a precedent for future negotiations. AI's influence is already widespread, from de-aging actors like Harrison Ford to generating abstract animated images and even providing recommendations on streaming platforms like Netflix. Actor and writer Jonathan McLean is leading the charge, comparing this battle to fights over automation in other industries. He believes it's a sign of things to come as technology keeps improving. It's easy to marginalize what we do because it's entertainment, McLean said on the picket lines outside Warner Bros. Studios, and I get it. But I feel on some level we are, as far as this tech conversation is concerned, a little bit of a canary in a coal mine. This is an important moment and we've got to really make a decisive stand. So here's the tea on the AI discussions between the Screen Actors Guild American Federation of Television and radio artists SAG-AFTRA and the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, AMPTP. It all started as a theoretical framework, but things escalated quickly into a bitter battle when the strike went live on July 13th. 
SAG-AFTRA released a statement calling out the studio's AI position. They claimed the studios wanted to use actors' images without consent, change dialogue or create new scenes without informed consent, and even use actors' likenesses and performances to train AI systems without permission or compensation. Yikes, the AMPTE fired back, saying their offers included an AI proposal protecting performers' digital likenesses, requiring their consent to use digital replicas or alter performances. They tried to clear the air, but I very much doubt that Hollywood's big shots won't be looking to protect their bottom lines over anything else. The results of these negotiations could have a big effect on a specific group of actors, the working class ones. You know, the non-prominent actors who often take on background roles to build experience, connections, and pay the bills. According to Time, a whopping 86% of the union's 160,000 members don't even make enough money to qualify for health benefits, which is around $26,000. Now, here's where things get interesting. Prominent actors, like the big shots we all know, would probably have the resources to hire top-notch entertainment lawyers to negotiate contracts that work in their favor when it comes to AI stuff. But those working-class actors? Not so much. And that could be a problem because if AI ends up performing worse than them, it could seriously damage their reputations. But hey, even the big names in Hollywood are getting concerned. Take Tom Cruise, for example. He actually joined the negotiations to push the producers on SAG-AFTRA's AI concerns. Now, let's switch gears and talk about the writers. In their contract talks, the Writers Guild of America, WGA, was open to using AI as a tool in their creative process. But there's a catch. They don't want AI-generated material to be considered literary material or source material. This is to ensure they retain their prestigious credits and eligibility for awards like the Oscar for an original screenplay. The AMPTP clarified that AI-generated material wouldn't be eligible for writing credit, but this could raise some new concerns. It might lead to confusion and complications about who gets credit when collaborating with AI in the creative process. Screenwriting contracts and credits are already a bit of a maze, and adding AI to the mix could turn it into an even stickier situation. The Guild may need to step in to sort out the fine details and legal language for determining credits. The strikes in general have garnered quite the support among union members. Reports of studio executives raking in millions while the striking workers face hardships have given the whole situation a supervillain vibe, which has fueled the resistance movement. But not everyone in the union is on board with the strike. Aerostar Stephen Amell recently spoke out against it at GalaxyCon. While he stands with his union, he made it clear that he doesn't support striking. I think that it is a reductive negotiating tactic and I find the entire thing incredibly frustrating. And I think that the thinking as it pertains to shows like the show that I'm on that premiered last night, I think it's myopic. I think the fact that Steven doesn't even know how to correctly use words like reductive and myopic really puts into perspective how important writers are to people like him. He specifically mentioned a show he's on, likely referring to Heels, which premiered on Stars recently. Due to the strike's rules, actors can attend events like Galaxy Con, but can't promote any work done for the studios involved in the strike. While Stephen Amell's frustration is understandable, the reality is that the strike is a crucial step to protect the livelihoods of ordinary actors who depend on their performances to make a living. If they don't take action, there's a genuine risk of studios replacing actors with robots and asking nicely won't cut it. Now, Stephen Amell might be doing just fine, having been the lead character in a popular TV series for eight seasons. He's unlikely to face financial struggles while waiting for the studios to negotiate. However, the strike isn't just about him. It's about securing better lives for smaller actors who live gig to gig. It's worth noting that Steven's reluctance to mention the show he's currently on might have been due to the strike rules and perhaps he was speaking out of frustration. We don't know if he clarified his stance on being against strikes but supportive of the union, which might seem contradictory. The internet, though, seems, for the most part, very united with the striking actors and writers. One person tweeted, FFS writers are literally on strike demanding to be paid. Yes, my aim is money and making enough sales to make good money. Don't devalue the expectations and labor of those who do, in fact, write for money, effing pay writers, and maybe support them instead of posting this SHIT. Another person ripped into Stephen Amell for the comments he made, saying, So you don't care if actors and writers don't make enough money to eat and have a home simply because the studios refuse giving fair pay? 
And this person really said what everyone has been thinking. The fact that studios are so stupid that they think the best option to help save them money during a strike is to delay films rather than just pay their writers and actors fairly is bewildering to me. Like the most reasonable option is right there and they won't freaking do it. That's all for the video, folks. Thanks for watching.